this is our John Deere 2510C toolbar. This is a 13 knife applicator. And this is again, it's a 2510C. Now they make the 2510s available in three configurations. They make it in S, which comes in two configurations, and then they made it in C. The C has been discontinued. The 2510S Master is the top of the line, which has a full Coulter gang in the front, and then in the rear has these closing baskets on a hydraulic cylinder. They're actually on a rocker shaft, so instead of being attached to these frames, they're actually on a rocker shaft, a separate rocker shaft, and they hide, they're the same arm, but they're hydraulically actuated in or out of the ground. All of the 2510 toolbars were the same. The toolbar is the exact same uh, part number zone, no matter which one you buy. Uh, the C's, which this one is, were available in 13 shank or 17 shank. And then the S, which came in masters and mediums, were available as 12s or 16s. Again, same toolbar, it's just how they moved it around. Uh, the colders and the knives, for example, on a 12 and 713, this would be in between here. That's why there's a slot in this. It's actually for the U-bolt to go through. Then the uh, outer units are uh, dropped down. On the Master Series, which has the colders, the colders are on 15-inch centers. I think they're a 22 or 24-inch colder. And they attach here. And again, that's a hydraulic rocker shaft that will bring those colders in on the ground. Kind of looks like a 712 chisel plow. Uh, if you if you will, and then the C's, and then the S 2510S mediums used the 22-inch uh, free swinging colders, which is what this has. And as I just mentioned earlier, the S masters have a rocker shaft closer. The C's, then the S mediums use. Uh, this free swinging one here um, and this is a bolt on shank unit and then this piece obviously just welds it's just a piece of box tube welded on that these uh, um, hang on up around the shank and you can adjust them in or out and you can adjust the angle uh, there's quite a few adjustments you can do with them again this style is used on the uh, S medium and then the C's ironically the very very first few serial numbers with I mean, just only a very few select units came out with. I, I don't know the exact count on the units, but probably less than 10. Uh, on the mediums, came out with the 2510S Master Closers. So they had a single colder in front, and they had the hydraulic closers in the back. But they immediately changed that to the uh, free swinging on the, uh, the uh, medium models. And then, like I say, the C model was discontinued. Uh, 2510S Medium. And 2510C are pretty much the same thing except for one key difference. And that one key difference is this knife. Uh, these just use a standard uh, anhydrous knife on these C's. And then the S, and the, um, uh, which is the master and the medium, they use a John Deere knife only. Which you can see the knife starts right here. It's just a standard anhydrous knife. The difference between the C and then the S's is these brackets right here. And these are no longer um, used. Like I say, they don't sell these anymore. So the only two you're going to get is going to have the uh, John Deere knife only on them. One other small difference between the uh, C and the S medium was the rear hitch. This rear hitch, as you notice, is uh, gapped apart instead of just being one box tube down the center. And the reason it's gapped apart is so that shank can actually float up and down in between it. And uh, then these float up and down around it. So it's pretty tight tolerance here. Like I say, on a, if this was a uh, S medium on 12, that would be a uh, single hitch. It'd be just be one box tube down through the center. Now, on this toolbar, we, uh, we purchased this in spring of 2019. I think I showed it in some earlier videos. And we are in the process of um, combining some toolbars here to uh, eventually make one uh, dual placement machine. And I had some comments asking if we're going to be doing like urea with that. No, it won't. It'll be a uh, probably P in one hopper, K in the other. And then you'll have your anhydrous, um, which goes through these Raven systems. And 
that's a John Deere rate controller there. The card will have a similar rate controller, and these two rate controllers will tie together so we can run everything through one system uh, through your armrest display. And here in these photos, you're seeing that 1910 cart hooked up to the 2510S medium toolbar that we will be purchasing. Now, as you probably just noticed in the pictures I just put up, uh, there is a 2510S toolbar attached to that dry cart. Uh, that toolbar is fine. It's a 16 knife bar. It's a it's a 16 knife. S medium toolbar and uh, the, like again let's these toolbars are all the same you can see the holes up there and where the uh, additional winglets would bolt onto these when they do go to 16s they do put a bigger cylinder in here and they do have uh, some additional lines that come off of these I guess and it's a hose routing kit because you have another set of folding cylinders so it's a hydraulic kit a little bigger cylinder and uh, this one uses an 8-bolt hub with a uh, 12.5 L15 tire. And then that uh, 16, they had a special tire. It was a uh, something, something, something 18-inch tire. It's kind of an oddball tire, but uh, it was for the additional weight that the uh, winglets add to it. Uh, all said and done, we'll have a 12-knife toolbar. Uh, probably this one with the individual colders. We're going to use the C-knife mounts, these. And we're going to uh, buy uh, B33 mole knives with the dry tube on them. And I'll actually have to upsize that tube and then drill the holes through it for the airlock releases because there isn't a knife made besides the John Deere one. And I do not like the John Deere knife. Uh, that is one of the things I don't like uh, about the S or the S medium is that John Deere knife. Just a standard uh, mole knife is far superior in my opinion and pulls quite a bit easier. But uh, again, all said and done, we're going to have a 12-knife uh, toolbar with a 1910 uh, cart uh, trailing behind it that's capable of holding uh, 9 tons of fertilizer, and it will be a dual-placement machine. Uh, you might notice that the hitches on these are pretty long, and one of the reasons that is is because this was designed for a cart in the front or a cart in the rear. The uh, cart we're getting, as you noticed in the pictures, is a cart in the rear. Uh, now, if you look at my video archive, we had a dual placement John Deere machine being pulled as a 9430 uh, some time ago, and it was a cart in the front. The reason we sold that was because the cart had wore out, the meters were shot, and at that time, Red E and other meters were not making aftermarket meters. They're only available through John Deere, and uh, we had a pretty good buyer for it. Um, we didn't realize maybe there would be as much yield uh, drop without the dual placement. And that's not to say we haven't gotten good yields. I just don't feel like for the amount of fertilizer you put on, the return on invest is as good with a broadcast. Uh, it's When you put it in the band and you put it on the row, that is the absolute best thing you can do to, to get uh, proper placement, quick results, and good return on investment, uh, cost effective. Also, I never liked the front cart. The front cart, uh, it was made of this long hitch so you could turn the duels of the cart would turn inside the hitch here. But that front cart, you couldn't see your toolbar at all. And they had these little short hoses that went up to the cart and they bent a lot and they, and they had long pipes and it would wear everything out. With the rear cart, the uh, hose layout's uh, f far superior. So we're in the process of redoing this Raven system here, uh, dual, dual super coolers. And we'll uh, have dual tank hookups, and all this will come off. And if you notice up there, you can see those little brackets sticking up. Those are uh, some bolt hole mounts, and there'll be two big frame rails that stick down here. Again, this hitch all comes off, and the big hitch goes out the back, and it hooks onto the dry cart. So, again, it'll be a 12 knife uh, on 30 inch spacing, which is going to made up to the planter, uh, dual placement machine, and then we'll sell off the additional toolbar or trade it for something. Uh, and I may not even have to buy that other toolbar. I'm still negotiating that a little bit. And here on the wing, you can see this one has a shutoff out here and over there. I don't particularly like the odd shank machines because you got uh, six over there, seven over here. I'd like to have six and six. That should be broke down enough. I mean, it's only 15 foot of width, so you're still going to save quite a bit of hydrous, and I won't have to go buy any more uh, motors or anything. But uh, two uh, half-width shutoff would be pretty good for an hydrous. 
I've uh, been fighting some rust in these super coolers because this tool bar sat. You can see this one hose right here. It's kind of gotten some black in it. And that's a brand new hose actually, but I'm going to have to blow them super coolers out again. So there's some pretty nasty rust in there. But if anybody's curious to how those work, there's a uh, basically a tube that goes through there and it uses anhydrous to cool anhydrous if you can figure that one out. And what it does, it takes the vapor off of it and puts it out these vapor hoses, these clear lines here. And then uh, it goes through a flow meter and then the uh, rate control valve. So you speed up, it opens it up more. That's basically the gist of it. And then there's the brain box, which is nothing more than a John Deere rate controller. There has been a few headaches on this that have been working out since we started with the little hydrus this fall. And like I say, we're now we're going to be going into uh, uh, spring where we'll start to set this thing up for a dual placement to do the majority of our week plus some custom. And uh, so you guys can continue on the ride. I just wanted to explain some basic parameters as to the different model numbers and things between the uh, series of these. And again, you guys will uh, have more videos on this coming. And right here, we're, we're basically we're gassing ourselves in the shed trying to get this hose vented so we can we can uh, get this opened up. So we need to put a, whoever had this toolbar, they downsized the hose here uh, and then went up size here. So that's actually gonna be a flow restriction and uh, we wanna make sure we got bigger plumbing. And we're just gonna go ahead and take that off and go to two lines anyway. So uh, whoever did it didn't do a very good job of plumbing it. Again, we're redoing all that so we'll get more flow so we can go faster. This 8400 is truly amazing tractor. The power of this thing is just unreal. Uh, 400 engine horse, and when we went to the 710 tires across it, it, it just seems like it pulls a lot better even yet. And we're gonna see how it handles the 12 knife uh, 12 knife 30 with the dry cart. Um, we're thinking that if we shed a knife, that's going to cut about 25 horse off, but we're going to add about 50 horse to the uh, requirements just to pull the dry cart. So that's, you know, adding 25, 30 more horsepower requirements. It's handling it good right now. Uh, we're very, very surprised. We used to have an 8530. We tried to pull our 12 knife 30 uh, machine in the past. It didn't work, so we ended up going with a 9430. But uh, this 85 or 8400R is uh, much more powerful than the uh, 8530 ever was. So we are quite impressed. 400 horsepower. I don't know if it's any more than that. Probably not. Could be a little bit under its boost system. But uh, 9430 was only at 425 horse. And now they got these up to 410. Uh, 8530, I think, was like 330 maximum horsepower. So, uh, again, this is at least 80 more horse. So, I'm surprised. If it handles the dual placement machine well, uh, I may not need that quad track down there. Uh, that was the number one purpose of it. But that quad track was bought right, so that may be something I actually am looking to flip to make money on. But uh, probably not likely, but you never know with this channel. We like to keep surprises. Keeps the viewers, uh, keeps you guys tuned in, and keeps adding suspense. And this little thing is 3020 here. This is a uh, PowerShift 3020. It's a uh, 67 rear end, late 67, 68 front half. And I am currently looking for a junked out 4020. I don't care, preferably it actually would have a, like just a synchro range rear end. And if the rear end was completely out, I, I could care less. Because all I really want to do is split it. Put a 4020 front end in it, and then the uh, 4020 synchro rear end, if, if it was a synchro, could go to the junk pile. Um, 3020 and 4020 on a power shift, the uh, power shift unit was identical. The only thing that was really a difference was the final drives housed a little bigger axle. The 3020 used a 4000 or a 4010 axle, and then the 4020 had a little bigger axle than either of those. So uh, basically, I'd be making a 4000 out of it. And that's something I would like to do. So if you, anybody knows of a 4020 that maybe has a decent front end, um, but a bad rear half, uh, hit me up in the comments. And if I decide to shake the tree a little bit and maybe make a couple updates, uh, this 148 loader here, which is a pretty clean little loader, uh, it will be for sale. And I do have an outlet for that engine in this front half but uh, there might be the front half of this tractor available. And I would like to buy a 4430 front axle conversion for it as well. So stay tuned, that could be some stuff coming up in the future. Uh, I like projects and yesterday I was at a dealer uh, looking at something and 
I didn't. It wasn't even there, so I didn't buy it. But I was running around out back, and there was a uh, 50-20, which you guys are going to see here in this next clip. And I got my creative juices all going, so to speak, because uh, we used to have a 60-30, and I always, always missed it. We made quite a bit of money selling it as I spent all summer restoring it. It was one of my first restoration projects, but I wish I hadn't sold it now. But there was a 50-20 there, and so I got home, and I started looking up 50-20s. And I'm going to hit the dealer up on that 50-20, but I think it might be a customer's. So I'm going to find out for certain, but uh, I think I might buy a 50-20 in the future. I don't know. That could all change. So if I do, stay tuned. And uh, as always, thank you for watching. And by the way, uh, I hate fluid and tires, and it severed the valve stem. And ran all over our floor in here and up against the wall, so we've been washing it out. And you move the tractor, and it has more of it come out, so it's a, it's a damn mess. But uh, anyway, stay tuned. There'll be more in the future, and some really cool stuff coming. If I could uh, scrounge up the money, I might buy a, might buy a 5020 that I did find after looking at that other one, and uh, it's a pretty clean one. But uh, I actually like the 5020 over a 6030. Just because they were the biggest of the of the uh, 20 series, I kind of always liked the, the 20 series. 6030 is the same thing as on steroids, but it just you know, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a 20 series. And I've always had a soft spot in my heart for for the 20 series tractors. So, uh, but you could put a 619 in a in a 5020 and make a 300 and some horsepower tractor out of it too. So, anyway, thanks for watching again, and uh, stay tuned for the next video. And as I just mentioned, there's that uh, 5020 that I uh, spotted the dealer and gave it a good walk around. Uh, what a beast of a tractor. But um, thank you for watching this video, and I am going to be doing another one pretty quickly here. It's going to be a rant video because I know some of you guys actually really like those. And uh, since I did my last one, it was not to be designed as an anti-Trump uh, video. It was to be designed as to make people aware of what's actually being passed and done in, in your system of Congress with your elected idiots. Um, anyway, I am going to find out about this tractor though, because it had an original M&W turbocharger. Um, I think it even had some of the M&W stamps on stuff still. So pretty rare. But uh, thanks for watching this video, and I will have another one coming right up. Uh, if you don't like the rants to politics, uh, probably don't watch the, the next video to follow this. But um, anyway, there you go. Oh yeah, there's a, there's a, a I think it's a pyro on the on the dash there. They had. But, yeah, it's really cool. It's, what, a, what a beast. Looks like a 4020 on um, 8 tons of steroids. Oh, and as a conclusion to this video, here's another 4010 that showed up. And this one we gotta rebuild the uh, front end. Again, not mine, but uh, we gotta rebuild the uh, front end on this one. And it's having a hydraulic pump. I already checked into some stuff there and took the side screens off, but he said that the hydraulic pump, uh, once it gets hot, like the three points won't even lift or really produce any power. So um, I'm thinking maybe it might be more of a scavenge pump issue than the actual. Uh, front hydraulic pump but uh pretty straight old tractor uh just needs paint but it's uh, pretty straight uh 16 rears but you can see it is an original paint tractor actually and there isn't much paint left but the metals uh very very straight on it um and those are original decals but it's uh it's quite straight it just uh needs paint and i think he does have a new seat he wants to get put on there but uh, we'll get her cleaned up, we're going to rebuild the front end on it, and then we'll go from there.